First into the den is Scott Cupid. He was a banker, but decided to swap his job for something with a little more swing. Very dead fun. Uh, yeah. You believe it? Hi, Dragons. Thanks for your time. My name's Scott. I'm here to tell you about Swing Patrol. We'd like to uh, offer 10% equity and uh, we'd like to ask for 65,000 pounds. So what is Swing Patrol? It's the biggest swing dance school in the world. We have 1,200 students a week. We operate in 27 venues across London. We have a very talented, award-winning teaching team. And we have momentum and growth. We run a festival, the annual London Swing Festival. We run competitions. We run a lot of big social dances. We do corporate entertainment. We provide a lot of dancers. We have two great troops. It's a very immersive experience, vintage DJs, the whole thing that you might require under a swing umbrella. We would love you to do a two minute lesson with me. It'll be fun, it'll be easy. You may even learn a step. What do you say? I'm up for it. I'm gonna come and dance. All right, yeah. all right, hit it, Mr. Music. Five, six, five, six, nine. A pitch with a spring in its step from Scott Cupid, who is seeking £65,000 in return for a 10% share in his swing dance business. Thanks, Mr. Music Man. <laughs> Thank you, Dragons, for jumping in. We appreciate it. Thank you. Deborah Meaden, who recently swapped the boardroom for the ballroom, gets straight down to business. That was fun. I suck at the business. I think you called yourself the biggest swing dance school in the world. Yes. Um, how does that turn into cash? Well, the revenue has uh, had a steady growth. Over the last five years, it started at perhaps uh, 36,000, then it's gone up to 84, 120, 180, 210, and the last financial period was 280,000. The gross profit has uh, reached 190,000. And net profit? Uh, this year it was uh, 67,000. It's had a solid growth and all the projections are it should continue to grow. So how does it work? So it's like, it's like a Zumba really, isn't it? In terms of the modelling. I mean, it's the, well, that's not really dance. We wouldn't pretend to be as big as Zumba no, because they're so uh, massive, but... Uh, that's where you'd like to go. It's the same joy. Like, they've really done something really clever. When people come to a Swing Patrol class, they're interacting with people. You know, they've been online all day. Here's your chance in one class. You'll interact with 30, 40 people. And I know it's, it's an art form, so it's not going to go anywhere. Right. But the interest levels in it might. I've been involved for 15 years, yeah. and I've been told for 15 years that it'll about to die out. And all I've seen is it continue to grow. And I think as long as we keep pushing it, we're keeping it in people's mind. I can't express how much I really enjoyed that. That was really, I didn't want it to end. It's fantastic. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, have you tried this in health clubs? Zumba's been great, there's no doubt about it, but yeah. we do think there might be room for something new. We have this fitness program called the Charleston Challenge. It's high energy, it's good exercise, it's great music, but it's a secret. Again, we haven't done it very well. We certainly haven't put it through a chain or anything. If I start coming regular, yes. I'll learn how to throw a good all in the air. <laughs> uh, in time, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, how long will that take? A couple of months. Couple of months. You up for that, Debra? Debra, you and me, throw you in there. Um, I'd like to see you practice it with somebody else before you <laughs> throw me in the air. <laughs> Deborah Meaden is keeping her feet firmly on the ground. And a pragmatic approach is also being adopted by telecoms tycoon Peter Jones. The issue that really hits me straight away is how do you build this into into a business that can make a, a lot of money. These sell-out events, it, it's just been incredible the last eight to 12 months that we are sadly turning people away. Part of that is if we just had a swing club with a bit more room, that we could have the same events on Friday, Saturday nights, we could almost prove to the Dragons that we could do it elsewhere as well. And is there such a location that you could get that 
isn't ridiculously expensive. The one we have in mind is about 35,000 uh, square feet. And so what deposit. is the rental of that building? What would it cost you? 50,000. But you'd have to fit it out. This is an old warehouse. And what's the cost of that? Uh, according to the uh, people we've met, contractors, about 15,000. Uh, there needs to be a sprung dance floor. Of course, we'd require security. We'd require a bar. Scott, you mentioned a bar. That you're not thinking of putting alcohol in, are you? Yes. That, 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 that changes the landscape quite considerably. We'd like to think of this ballroom being a multi-purpose room. It would be a place where you could do fitness things and so forth, but we want it to be almost 24-7. The details of Scott's planned warehouse conversion have set alarm bells ringing amongst the dragons. Kelly Hoppen is quick to voice concern over his optimistic estimate of the potential cost. I can tell you, being in the building business and design business, there is no way you could do that for 15,000. And I'm not sure that your model's right. I'm just trying to get my head around it. But having said that, if you have the whole thing done, that becomes your franchise model, which will be easier to then Yeah, my sell. hope was that we could talk uh, a dragon into being involved with one of them and then seeing, showing you how successful it was, and then that could be done somewhere else quite easily because we've done it once. Scott, I'll tell you where I am. I think if you come in and pitch this as trying to create, the, you know, the Zumba of Swing, that's potentially interesting. Retrenching into a venue and opening a nightclub, no matter what happens there, it doesn't work for me. Um, best of luck. I may come down one night. You'd be very welcome. I'm out. Despite a promising start, Scott's prospects of securing an investment have taken a serious hit. Will Deborah Meaden also be turned off by the direction he wants to take the business? The whole venue thing worries me, honestly. And if you're wedded to that, it worries me enough to say... I'm not, Deborah. before we you need, say I was going to say, we need to stop the conversation. If there was a chance that a dragon thought that Swing Patrol was something viable, I'd give you a commitment that I'd walk away from this idea. An ability to think on his feet rather than dance with them appears to have saved Scott from disaster. But will his swift change of direction have swung the remaining dragons in his favour? You're obviously quite flexible in, in, in how you would carry it forward. I, I love it, and so I'm going to make you an offer. I'm going to offer you half the money. I'd want 10%. Thank you for your offer. I'm an exercise freak. I run or train every day. I love to dance, and I think that there's definitely a business model here that, that could be rolled out. I'd like to offer you half the money for 10%, because I think that there are lots of good brains in this room, and I think that Indeed. we can all offer something different. And will you let me throw you up now? Yeah. Hey! Yay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Two enthusiastic offers from Kelly Hoppen and Duncan Bannatyne. Will Peter Jones also be prepared to supply the cash needed to elevate Scott's business? Scott, I think that it's, it's clearly... Oh, it's wonderful. Everything about it is great. You'd um, even like that we all wear stripy socks in uh, the Lindy Hop world. Did you know that? Do you? Oh, every one of us, yes. So I'm in fashion. <laughs> you are, yes. Oh. Finally. <laughs> you know, I think I'm a bit young to go on Strictly just yet. So I'll hold that opportunity, um, and I hope that it might come in years to come. Um, but I think that you've got some incredible offers. So I'm going to say I'm out, but I wish you the very best of luck, Scott. Four dragons have now declared their positions. And with two offers already on the table, it's time for Strictly Come Dancing contestant Deborah Meaden to have her say. I've often said to people, you know, loving something doesn't make it a good investment. Sure. You know, in I fact, understand. sometimes you have to take a back step and say, you know, because I love it, I can't see a clear picture. But what I like about you is your credibility and your history. Um, Fair so I'm going to make you an offer. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to offer you all of the money. Um, but I want 20% of the business. 
Oh, I need a couple of minutes, if that's okay. Just one or two. I built this on a real passion for dance, and so I think I'm going to accept uh, Deborah's offer. Thank you. Well, I've got, now I'm allowed to be excited. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, well, there we are. You know, and that was my that was my head over my heart, but now I'm allowed my heart to get excited. Brilliant. So Scott waltzes out of the den, having secured both the sixty-five thousand pound investment he was seeking. <laughs> and the backing of self-confessed dance nut, Deborah Meaden. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I can't believe it. That's so amazing. Whew. It's a perfect fit, isn't it? It's all about timing. Why, well, because she's been in Strictly. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah, honestly, yeah. Duncan, oh, that's, all, that's all. And, and I understand that's it, it. For, for that reason, just for that reason. 